with the recent death of Chick Corea, another musician's death that I, I took very hard. I decided to revisit a lot of his stuff. Now, Chick Corea is never far away from me, especially with my love of jazz. And especially, and especially the guys who came out of that period of miles of the late 60s, early 70s, starting with In a Silent Way and Bitches Brew and all of that. You know, Chick, Herbie Hancock, John, uh, John McLaughlin and uh, the Mahavishnu Orchestra, Joe Zalanol and Wayne Shorter with The Weather Report, and even Tony Williams, who wasn't a part, who, uh, who, who did his own thing with the Tony Williams Lifetime, who was the first to really combine rock and roll and jazz and improvisation to the point where jazz critics, um, they really criticized him. And then on his follow-up album, it's, uh, he even gets Jack Bruce on bass of Cream and gives the ultimate middle finger to... The jazz critics, he doubles down on what he does. But this stuff in the 70s with Chick Corea and all of them, they uh, the jazz people had to come up with a term for it, and it became fusion. To me, it was just an extension of what was before. But that's where the dividing line happened. You were either playing, quote, real jazz which is evocative of the bebop era and uh, the Miles Davis kind of blue era. Or you were fusion. To me, there's just one kind of jazz. Now, you always had pop jazz. The likes of Herb Alpert, Hugh Masekela. You know, he had a big hit with, with Grazing in the Grass. ba da da ba da da ba da ba ba da ba 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 and you could say that transformed into smooth jazz. But even in smooth jazz, you have some heavy hitters like Marcus Miller, David Sanborn. I mean, those guys are no, are no slouches when it comes to playing and knowing what to do. But I felt all that stuff in the 70s with Weather Report, the stuff Herbie Hancock did... Pre Headhunters and with Headhunters. John McLaughlin with the Mahavishnu Orchestra and all of that. And the stuff happening at the CTI label, which was kind of on the cusp of that as well. I mean, Freddie Hubbard's you know, trilogies of, uh, with um, my favorite being Red Clay. There was nothing smooth about any of that stuff, it was hard hitting experimentation. I don't even know if they called it jazz. They didn't call it fusion. They called it uh, whatever. You know? <laughs> I, I don't know what to call it. But to me, it's still within the jazz realm. Still within improvisation, but maybe using the rock flavorings or the funk flavorings of the time. But that's what music is. It's always about progression. So I became a fan of Chick Corea and his band Return to Forever. But it's the classic lineup of Chick, Stanley Clark on bass, Lenny White on drums, and of course, guitar virtuoso Al Di Miola. Those four, to me, created the quintessential lineup of Return to Forever. And I think some of Chick's finest stuff is with Return to Forever, and the masterpiece of Return to Forever is this album right here. This album right here, The Romantic Warrior. I've played this album to death. This is the remaster that came out in the 90s. Eventually, I found a vinyl copy. This is an original um, vinyl copy of the album. There you go, Al, Lenny, Chick and Stanley. These four, composers in their own right, contributing all six songs to an overall 
medieval theme to this record. Slightly in the prog rock vein, during this time you had a lot of the proggers, especially uh, Rick Wakeman, getting into medieval stuff. Um, and this, it has an overall theme. It doesn't have a musical theme, though, like there isn't a reoccurring musical motif. But this is a suite. You begin the album with Chick's Medieval Overture, which goes through so many different colors and so many different flavors and textures with Chick's keyboards and Al's striking guitar sounds. Beautiful. And then changing tempos, changing different tempos. I mean, the, the, the rhythm section of Stanley and Lenny just keeping this, this ferocious pace in the midsection. It's really just... It, uh, when I, th I thought Mahavishnu Orchestra blew me away with their classic lineup on the first two albums, this totally... When I first heard this, this totally made my mouth drop, drop because I was used to Chick with his electric band in the 80s and the 90s, you know, which was a bit more on the smoother side. And this is just wild, the opening. Then you begin with... You know, Lenny White's you know, Sorceress getting you into this nice, you know, sexy funk groove in that song. Then the title track, The Romantic Warrior, written by Chick. Probably the only acoustic track on the record, even though it still has a pulsating drum beat. Chick's playing acoustic piano. Al Di Miola on acoustic guitar. And Lenny White, is, I mean, excuse me, Stanley Clark is on stand-up bass that he bows at the beginning of it. But what I love is the main figure of the song. Chick and Al do that phrase in unison, that It's a beautiful, just I love the phrasing of that. Then you got Al Di Miola's Majestic Dance. That is rock and roll heaven right there. A, uh, some great playing from Al and the entire ensemble. Then Stanley Clark's The Magician. I think that's kind of a lighthearted you know, thing in there. They create this, this, this nice, mysterious opening to it. But then Chick comes back again with another epic. The Duel of the Jester and the Tyrant in two parts. And that's a lot. Beautiful groove, but they really get into different elements. You know, the playing with this band. I mean, they were a band, and as an ensemble, these guys gelled. But, you know, Chick is always there with his keyboard textures, acoustic piano, or his synthesizers, and his electronics, everything that he was doing. Um, but as an ensemble, I would think that these guys were unbeatable as an ensemble. Maybe a weather report with Jocko on bass would possibly rival them. Or maybe the first incarnation of Mahavishnu Orchestra with Billy Cobham on drums and, and Jan Hammer on keyboards. That lineup could rival these guys. But... Man, it was sad. This was the last album with this lineup. And then uh, the next album was not that much of a success. Aldimiola Al left and Chikoria got his wife in the band. A lot of things happened there. They did reunite in the late 2000s, this lineup. But then Aldimiola didn't take part of any you know, future lineups. But Chikoria is a jazz master, I feel. And he needs to be up there with a lot of the greats. And this album, if you haven't heard Romantic Warrior, you definitely need to go out and pick this up. It's, uh, you, you could hear what made Chick Corea so great and hear what made the other guys on this album so great and really take the world of music, not only jazz, but music in general, by storm. And because this channel originally started out as a Beatles channel, us you Beatle fans might know Stanley Clark from the song Hey Hey off the Pipes of Peace album by Paul McCartney. Let me know what you think, and I'll definitely talk to you soon. <laughs>